Welcome to Why Motivating People Doesn't Work and What Does. Hi, I'm Susan Fowler, and to stimulate your thinking and to maybe give you some insight into the science of motivation, let's do a little pop quiz. I'm going to be putting a question up on the screen with four potential answers. Now you can just yell your answer at your screen, or if you want to take notes, you can jot down your answer. What I'd really like for you to jot down are any of the questions that you get wrong and you're kind of curious or challenged by that. Or even if you get a question right and you're thinking, but I'm not sure why it's right. Because that might give you some framework for what we're going to be doing through the rest of this program. All right, are you ready? Here's the first question. Motivation is A, a skill, B, inherited, C, like intelligence, one either has it or they don't, D, all of the above. Okay, what's your answer? Yell it out, write it down, because here's our most defensible answer. Motivation is A, a skill. All right, ready for number two. Here's question number two. The three psychological needs required by every human being to thrive, regardless of gender, generation, or race, are A, autonomy, mastery, and purpose. B, mastery, membership, and meaning. C, autonomy, relatedness, and competence. D, all of the above. Got your answer? Okay, here's ours. C, autonomy, relatedness, and competence. Okay, if you're wondering about that, make a note. All right, here's question number three. Common practices that undermine people's psychological needs are A, applying pressure and demanding accountability. B, ignoring feelings. C, discounting learning. D, all of the above. Got your answer? Here's ours. D, all of the above. All right, let's go to question number four. Managers cannot motivate people because A, they don't have enough resources. B, people are already motivated. C, they don't have the skills. D, all of the above. Think about that one. Get your answer down or yell it at your screen. And here's our most defensible answer, because people are already motivated. Hmm. You wonder about that. That's really a lot of what our program is about. Okay, here's question number five. A best practice that helps people shift to an optimal motivational outlook is A, praising, B, status building, C, framing deadlines as information rather than a form of pressure, D, all of the above. Okay, here's our answer, C. Framing deadlines as information rather than a form of pressure. Okay, I hope you're doing well. And if you're not, I hope you've got some great questions and challenges. Here's your final question. Viable strategies for self-regulation include A, personal incentives and rewards, promoting mindfulness, aligning with values and connecting to purpose, C, competition and treating work like a game to be won, D, all of the above. And your answer is, and ours is, B, promoting mindfulness, aligning with values, and connecting to purpose. I hope that quiz generated some questions for you, maybe some curiosity, maybe even challenged your thinking a little bit, because that's what we're going to be doing in this program, is really delving into motivation, what works, what doesn't work, and why it works. My interest peaked my curiosity in 1985 when overnight I became a vegetarian. Now my family and friends who knew me were really surprised because they knew how much I love meat and they thought this is really going to be really hard for her and it's going to take her a, a long time to get used to it. Well what was amazing was that it was the easiest thing to do I've ever done and 35 years later it's just the way I am, it's just who I am. But back then when it was so easy for me to just give up meat and start being a vegetarian I thought Wow, why is that so easy for me? What's behind that? So I started reading and studying about motivation. And it just so happened that one afternoon, I was watching Oprah Winfrey, and she said, this show is gonna rock your world. This show is gonna revolutionize the way you parent and the way that you teach if you're a teacher. And I thought, okay, that's interesting. She says, it's gonna change the way you motivate your children and your students. Wow, it's about motivation. So I was riveted. 
Well, it was an interview with Alfie Cohn, who had written the book, Punished by Rewards. And his message was, stop bribing your kids. You're bribing them to do things that they want to do anyway. They want to learn, they want to grow, they want to develop, they want to contribute. And you're giving them all of these rewards and bribes is actually undermining their intrinsic motivation. Well, I was fascinated by that, but I, at the time, was not a parent or a teacher. And those people were angry and defensive. In fact, one woman, she just took him on and she goes, you know what, I don't think you understand. When your kid is crying, an ice cream cone is your best friend. And I've paid thousands of dollars in rewards to my kids over the years because that's the only way I can get them to help out around the house. And as a busy working mom, I need that help. So don't be telling me that I can't do what it is I've been doing because it's been working. I have to tell you, they challenged cones so I, I don't know, just with such anger and such energy that he became almost defensive. And I was curious, you know, he was talking about what doesn't work, but I think the reason that people were defensive was he really hadn't talked about what does work. And so I really started studying the work that he was studying, which was by Edward D.C. and Richard Ryan and the Community of Self-Determination Theory Researchers. And for 50 years, all over the world, they have been dedicated to understanding the nature of human motivation. And that's what resulted in the book that is the resource or the companion piece to this video program. It's called Why Motivating People Doesn't Work and What Does. I've written a number of other books, and I'll be drawing somewhat on those, but this new book is really about the science of motivation put to work because I've had the privilege of literally taking those ideas that are scientific and are conceptual and theoretical and, and evidence-based, but being able to put them into practical, pragmatic ideas that you can use, a framework and a process that will work for us and with those that we lead. So we can put the science to work, and that's what the topic of the next segment is.